But you came here on your honeymoon. I did, yes, yes. Where did you go? Uh, we went to Killarney, we stayed in Matmos Hotel, we were the only two people, it was the 3rd of January, it was freezing cold, wow! <laughs> and um, I was actually the only thing I could come on. Uh, I was doing my PhD on the bogs of Ireland, and every day I, with my wife, went out and we were collecting samples of water for analysis. And I actually wrote my first scientific paper on what I did on my honeymoon. The bog bit. <laughs> Not the other bit. <laughs> All right. So your credentials as a friend of the environment are, are, are well well known. But there is a huge body of science now who claim to be friends of the environment and they say our problems boil down to global warming generated by man. In other words, the, the CO2 from burning fossil fuels primarily and other greenhouse gases. And you actually say stuff and nonsense. Absolutely. I will prove it to you. Prove it to um, you. I should have had my other t-shirt on at this point with a picture of Marilyn Monroe on it with her skirt being blown up. Now I'm 76 and when I see that picture, my temperature goes up, followed by the CO2 I breathe out. And when we look at all the ice cores that we studied, that's exactly what happens. The temperature goes up and then CO2 is pouring out of the um, sea. And so it's not the driver of um, uh, global warming. Oh, hang on a sec. You're saying that whatever we burn in our cars and our power stations, that's, of course, producing CO2. But you're saying there's a lot of CO2 in the sea, and if, for other reasons, the temperature rises, the ocean uh, temperatures rise, and loads of CO2 comes out. And the other thing, if we actually wanted to double the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere, we'd have to bo uh, burn all the known gas, all the known um, oil, and one third of all the known uh, coal reserves. We couldn't actually do it. We would, we'd have to... Uh, clone Arthur Scargill and being the back again. So again, uh, you know, and that would put the temperature up at the most by two degrees centigrade. But so you, you get CO2. You know it is warmer than it used to be. I mean, we all can anecdotally say, I remember as a kid, the night before I got up for, for school, I would throw a milk bottle full of water on the footpath outside and the next morning I'd have a slide. Can't do that anymore. It just doesn't happen. Well, I um, think what's happening at this moment, in fact, um, in, over the last decade, the temperature has not more, despite the fact we are pouring more, and CO, more CO2 into the atmosphere. And it's, uh, you know, and the link there, I mean, if you are putting more CO2 into the atmosphere, why isn't the temperature going up? And in the last two years, the whole of that um, rise of temperature, 0.7 of a degree centigrade, that's all it was, has disappeared. It's gone. It's gone, yes. And we are now, if you look at the real data, which is the sunspots and the sun, um, we are heading for 30 damn cold years. And they will really start. So that's your theory, that it is uh, the, the sun, the activity of sunspots, that causes the rise in temperature? Absolutely. Not my theory. The, a theory of about 34,000 um, damn good scientists. So you can predict the, the cycles of sunspots and therefore you can predict when it's going to get warmer and when it's going to be colder? Yeah, because there are cycles. And when we don't have any um, sunspots, that means we don't have those baby um, plumes of energy coming from the sun, we get colder. Now and when we do have them, we get the warmer. I've got a page uh, from the, uh, the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. And it says carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide have increased markedly as a result of human activities in 1750 and now far exceed pre-industrial values. And it goes on. And there, there are volumes and volumes and volumes of this stuff penned by eminent scientists who all say that you're wrong and they're right. And there are many, many scientists and I say 34,000 who don't believe in it. And no, we, there is nothing on the um, media. You hear one side of the argument, you never hear the other side. And if you travel up into the Sahara, I was up there last year, and because of the CO2 going up into the atmosphere, um, uh, you know, because plant needs CO2, <laughs> I'm breathing out. If you've got the plants out there, you've been going faster because of the CO2 
ground, 300,000 square kilometres of the Sahara is growing trees now. And we're never told that. We are never told by things like the BBC, you know, that they say, oh, all the lakes in Africa are dying because of global warming. They're not. We put blooming dams around. We're using all their water to grow our cut flowers. Is it true that uh, in some countries they actually pump CO2 into tunnels to, to help plants to grow? Oh, absolutely. All our um, uh, good horticulturists, they put CO2 in there to rise the lake. The level and to put more carbon into the whole thing. to put carbon because they need it. We take in, um, uh, you know, take a big breath in, which is good doubling there with a bit of alcohol in it tonight. <laughs> and, you know, the plants all take up, say thank you very, very much, and they make sugar and they make oxygen. And without two, those two things, and so. Uh, I'm afraid it is a total scam and it's breaking very, very rapidly. You think it's a scam? You, you'd be it that is, strong about it, that uh, it is a yeah, confident strength. I, I don't think it started off as a scam, but it's a wonderful, wonderful way of controlling and taxing people. This idea of a carbon tax. How can you ca tax carbon? How can you put a uh, thing that people have been making millions and millions of pounds on this? And most of these things simply allow of rich countries to go on pouring out CO2, and I don't worry about CO2, but I do worry about sulfur dioxide, acid rain, and all those other things, and go on there. So they are indulgences like we had in the church um, you know, in medieval. So you pay. You pay for, your, for, for the freedom to CO2. Yeah, to go on polluting. All right. Um, the, the question, though, of burning oil, for example, uh, which is used as a raw material for so many useful things, wouldn't it be better not to be doing that, but produce our energy in another way? Well, if you can think of a good way of doing that and of finding another source of energy. Wave, wind, tide. Well, um, you know, uh, they are very, very, I mean, if you want to get me on wind, I stopped my first wind farm on Blue Peter in 1996, since when I've been banned off television. You haven't seen me on television. I for a long, long time. Why? Do you think it's because you are challenging the, the modern orthodoxy? Yes, we have um, an orthodoxy here, and if you step out of that line, and it wasn't me, just me, I mean, they um, sacked P um, Julian Pettifer, they sacked Robin Page, and they are just conservationists. And Robin Page used to do one man and his dog. He was chucked off because he wouldn't toe the line <laughs> and tell lies about. <laughs> do, do you believe that, then that you could actually have a scientific debate and trade science with uh, any of the people on this panel and prove them wrong? Well, uh, the test comes on Sunday because I'm going back over and we've got a, d a debate in London about this very thing. Um, but uh, there have been many debates. Last year, um, uh, as um, uh, the global war was 10,000, I well, do remember, this research uh, since 1990 has cost the taxpayers of this uh, world $50 billion <coughs> just to try and prove that they are right. And they will not. You, we, they have tried to get um, uh, Al Gore to debate, and he won't stand up and debate, and these people will not stand up and debate. So uh, there is another chance on Sunday, and I'll be down there mooting for the truth. I'd love to be there. David Bellamy, thank you very much for being with us.